right. Welcome back, everyone, and thank you so much for being with us. Uh, my name is Matt Cotty, and this is my good friend, Christina Orlovo. And we are doing this series on taboo thoughts and intrusive thoughts. Um, so in part number one, we covered the idea of you know, what type of intrusive thoughts people deal with. And part number two, we talked about how it's really not a thought problem. It's a wheel problem. It's this OCD wheel and the compulsions that we engage in are what fuel the wheel, right? So today, what I want to do is we tie up this three-part series is really talk about, okay, well, how do we, how do we break out of this? Now, now we understand the problem. Okay. Like we get it, but what do we do? Right. So, so Christina, like what are really the, the kind of fundamental tools that one would use if, if you're looking to overcome something like this? Yeah. So one of the number one uh, first tools is it's an evidence-based tool. It's known as exposure response prevention. It's, it's one of the aspects of ways we do cognitive behavioral therapy, and it's really specifically for OCD. Uh, We also want to incorporate acceptance commitment therapy uh, processes. And then Mm -hmm. of course, mindfulness. And um, so, so like just to, you know, cause I mean, obviously you and I know what that is, but let's, let's break that down for a second. So yeah. a lot of people hear all these things, mm-hmm. right. And they're like, okay, well, God, I need to do all this stuff. And, you know, they get, and they, and they get just overwhelmed hearing about this stuff. Right. So when we're talking about cognitive behavioral therapy, right. Like just breaking that down as a, as a thing, what we're talking about here is working from a cognition standpoint and a behavioral standpoint, meaning a thought, mm-hmm. a thought process and behavioral process. That's all cognitive behavioral therapy really means. We're incorporating both of those things. Now, ERP on the other is a tool underneath that umbrella, mm-hmm. right? That's right. And, and, and it stands for exposure and response prevention. So can you tell us a little bit more in an in-depth way of like, or I guess kind of a high level way, what is exposure and response prevention? Yeah. Um, so essentially what kind of the principle, so I always like to tell people that, you know, if you can grasp the principles Mm-hmm. then it can become easier to start to actually incorporate and, and move into doing this work. Sure. Um, and really one of the principles is you want to recognize that, you know, when you really understand how OCD works is that the more you compulsively respond to it, the more you're actually entrenching and, and kind of locking everything up. Right. So what you want to do instead is something that's going to feel really counterintuitive, which is instead of running away from or hiding from it, you want to expose yourself and face the thing that's causing you discomfort, right? So, mm-hmm. so that's a general principle. And that's something we know in general when we're working with fears right. is that the best way to overcome a fear is by actually finding a way to face it. Um, and of course, there's different steps you can take and, and how you can break things down to do that. But, but that's really the, the first principle is recognizing that, you know, by avoiding that the fear, whatever the fear is, you actually are making it bigger and it becomes worse. And, and then even just the thought of it will, will be crippling. Right. But when you expose and you find your, your way to make contact with it, um, you actually start to learn. You, you get to have real new data um, take place. So you get to really see what's actually happening and how scary is it really? And can I really actually maybe get through it? Did I, can I do more than I anticipated? And when you actually incorporate response prevention, so recognizing that, what would it be like if this time, you know, I didn't do my compulsion the way that I do, or even skipped it all together and, and kind of experiment and see what happens, you, you now proactively are really getting to, to execute this, this whole kind of new way of researching and studying your own behavioral patterns to see what actually happens. So, right. so if you can grasp those principles, then you can start to understand that, oh, okay, um, so I have a way that I can actually work with my fear brain, right, with my anxiety, um, in order to kind of really relearn what's actually going on here. Right. And, and, and so like, you know, I wasn't one that got good grades in school. So like, you know, like, so the, to, to, to simplify it right on the, on, on that level of exposure response prevention, right. Exposing it, you're confronting the thing you're afraid of. Now I can already hear in the people's minds that are listening to this, Matt, does that mean I really need to engage in bestiality to overcome this? It's right. Like, no, 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 I know. No, I already no, had that doesn't. thought. <laughs> no, it doesn't. Okay. Because, because again, again, we're not dealing with that content problem. What we're dealing with is a doubt or uncertainty about that problem. And what we're really exposing ourselves to is the uncertainty okay. is the idea of, I don't know. And instead of trying to solve the, I don't know, it's staying with the uncertainty and that, that activation. And then, and then the response prevention, of course, is just the 
compulsion elimination. Like if I had to summarize uh, exposure response prevention in like one sentence to be compulsion free, yep. right? Like that's it. Like, like, again, we're, we're switching from the idea of I'm going to try to solve the content. We're switching from the idea of I'm going to try to solve the thoughts or I'm going to try to solve the anxiety. My whole goal is to be compulsion free. Right. And, and so, um, and, and obviously this looks very different for each person. And this isn't something that you're going to just do in one day where, you know, you're not going to come into my or Christina's office and just, we're going to tell you, Oh, just don't do compulsions. It's like, Oh, okay. Yeah, <laughs> you know, right. Bye. bye. And, and so, yeah, cool. Um, you know, and, and, and the same thing, right? It's the same thing where your ther like, you know, other therapists will tell you, well, just stop worrying about it, you know? Like, yeah, that's all you need to do. Just stop worrying. It's like, okay, yeah, thanks for the help on that, right? Um, so so the when, when when someone's working on a specific fear, like like can, maybe we can talk about some examples of what ERP would look like with a more taboo idea mm -hmm. to make sure we understand that. I, I guess one of the main principles I also uh, really articulate with exposure and response, and I know you do the same, but um, it's really the idea in exposure and response prevention, no one ever gets hurt, right? We there is a safety first mechanism that ex is exposure response prevention, meaning if you have taboo thoughts about running someone over with a car right? We don't ever do that, okay? We, there's never anyone that gets hurt in this process, right? What you're doing is facing the internal distress within about an idea, okay? And so, yeah. so like safety is, it's very, very clear. I want you guys to understand if you're listening to this, that there, this is a safety, we, like safety first is always a priority, okay? Yeah, or like I tell people too, that you have to recognize that some some things that that pop in your head or some some of the fears and intrusions are not appropriate, to do live, right? Like right. we have to use a little bit of critical thinking here. Like right. obviously we're not gonna say, you know, like if I'm scared, if what if I'm a pedophile? I mean, obviously right. we're not like, it, it's, it, right. it's, it's immoral, it's unethical. So right. we have to recognize that that's, we're not talking about that, right? right? We're talking about really dealing with your fears, with your worry thoughts and, and the feelings, right? And mm -hmm. there's different exercises we have to get at that, right? To, to really learn how to work with, you know, live situations or things that are in your head um, so that right. you can then go ahead and expose yourself to that worry yeah. so, and fear. So, so like a good example, right. With that one, right. I remember I was working with someone and um, that struggled with the fear of pedophilia. And one of the things we did was we just walked by a park. Like that yep. was an exposure because they were afraid of parks because the parks triggered up thoughts. So the exposure was actually walking by a park having the thoughts flood up and not engaging in those compulsions, okay. right? That, that was the exposure. It had nothing mm -hmm. to do with kids. It had to do with, we're going to stimulate the thoughts and stimulate okay. the feelings by walking through a park or writing down a thought or writing a narrative mm -hmm. or all these other things we can do, you know, but, but the exposure is the in activating that internal fight or flight response and those intrusive thoughts. And then not engaging in the behaviors yeah i have another example from that really like i had um you know i love little post-its sometimes those are like yeah. my little my little tools so like i had a, a mom uh write a bad uh word on it mm -hmm. that you know connected to um a pedophilia concept and had to put her in her back pocket and all we did is um we contact this was actually pre-covid um since COVID, we've still we'll still do things like this. We just found other ways. Yeah. Uh, but the concept is, you know, like go reach out to like an elementary school and ask some questions about their program. Like how much does it cost? How many kids? Like what do you do? Right. But you have that little little word in your pocket. Right. So like that right there. Yeah. Or and again with COVID, all that that meant is, hey, maybe we do a call or we set right. up like a little intro video call. So you're still having right. that interaction with this person but you're like right. oh you know th there's everything everything's right there around you and everything is triggered and now it's in your pocket or the post-it is on your computer and you're talking and <gasps> right and yeah. again that's the point the point is to face those situations and watch what comes up while right. you're actively working mm -hmm. on challenging and catching and recognizing what an urge is what it feels like because that's part of part of the the thing here is you have to sure. kind of retrain yourself to to learn what, what is an urge anyway Right. No. And, and, and really, yeah, again, what, what this is, what exposure and response prevention really is about is, is like, we are, you know, because, because with, with our, many of our compulsions where it's, it's all a reaction, it's almost subconscious, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, I remember for me anyway, when I was really stuck in OCD, like I would start doing compulsive behaviors without even realizing I was doing them. 
right? Because I was such in that, and I was in, in that survival state so deep that I would just be like already ruminating. And I, and then like people would like, Matt, are you all right? You know, I'm like, oh, oh gosh, you know, like I'd have to like snap myself, stop, uh, snap myself out of it. <laughs> and, um, and, and because it can become so habitual that what we're really looking to do is to break these reactive habits that we have that are fueling this cycle. And, and again, to respond, right? So differentiating that idea of reacting and responding, we're okay. responding in a healthier way and ultimately proving to ourselves that this really isn't dangerous. It's not, it's not, I shouldn't be activating my fight or flight response because of this thought. Right. Exactly. Exactly. And like you said, exactly. I, I always, I usually use the words with, you know, you're an autopilot, right? So you're, when you're an autopilot, you're not even, you're not even there. You're just, like you said, habitually, right? It's, it, it's, it's merely the fact that you just didn't know any better. So you've practiced those responses so much. They've got really ingrained into your system. So it's like, mm -hmm. it's, it's gotten so conditioned in there that you just kind of default right to it. Yeah. And so with, with exposure response prevention, you get to literally recondition, retrain yourself, and you get to put conscious awareness, shed light on the stuff so that you get out of that autopilot mode so that you're not just habitually, you know, doing whatever you do without even being aware of it, but that you actually become aware and you get to realize you have choice. There's an right. area where you have choice, which just makes all the difference in the world. Right. And, and creating that space is really the first step that you're talking about, right? Is, yeah. is that space of recognizing I have a choice of how I'm going to respond to this because, right. because so many people uh, are so lost that they don't even realize one, that they're lost and two, that they're actually making choices. They, they just like, you know, cause I often hear people say things like, well, no, I have to do this. Yes. And I say, yes. What do you mean you have to do it? Does everyone have to do this? Okay. Well, why do you? Right. Like Matt, no, you don't understand. I have to count to 127 once I go through this doorway. And I'm like, okay, well, I didn't do that. Like what, like what's going to happen if I don't do that? You know what I mean? Well, no, it's not just you. It's just me. And it's like, well, hold on. Let, like, let's challenge this idea. Right. Because if we're operating from the idea of I have to do something or I can't do something like, you know, I'm sure you hear it time and again, Matt, I, Matt or Christina, I, I can't go to that school. Yeah. Well, in, 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 in our job in many ways. And, you know, and like, I, I tell people very, very frequently, right. When I'm working with them, like, look, like you're not going to like me, you know, like, like, you know, because, <laughs> because my, my job it is so paradoxical from what most people think therapy is. And, and here, here's the issue a lot of times, and I'm sure you've seen this time and again as well, is that someone will go to talk therapists and therapists that don't understand ERP and OCD and the therapist will become their compulsion. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Sometimes sessions become compulsion. Sometimes yeah. the treatment itself becomes a compulsion. So mm -hmm. that, that's the thing of it is, is understanding that anything can become a compulsion, but right. when you again, learn the principles of how right. this all works, then right. you know how to pivot yourself right. and apply those principles, even when that happens. Right. And and, and that's why, like, you know, and one of the reasons that, you know, I'm, I'm such a fan of Christina in, in the first place is, is because, you know, we operate from such a similar philosophy in the sense that anyone we work with, like our goal is to teach them to become their own therapist. Yep. You exactly know, right. I mean, I mean, because at the end of it, if I'm, if I'm working with someone and, and one of the reasons we're running this workshop, right. You know, yes. uh, coming up here on the 27th is because if I'm working with someone and I am their resource of how they get better, the day I'm not available, that person's in big trouble. That's right. Right. And, and that's why what we aim to do is to equip you with the skill set. So whenever OCD pops up, because it will pop up at the most inopportune times, mm -hmm. we know that. We know that, ladies and gentlemen. We got to expect that, in fact. Mm -hmm. Oh, you're having a wedding? Oh, okay. Guess what? I would, I would, re I would reckon that OCD is probably going to try to peek its head in there and see yep. what it can get. Oh, you're, you're moving, you're changing jobs, you're having a baby, mm -hmm. you know, this thing just happened in my life. Okay, let's get ready because it's going to look for every opportunity that it can to throw these thoughts so that you do compulsion. So it stays alive. Like exactly. when you really understand that OCD is its own life force in many ways, and, yes. and you have the ability to starve it to death by not doing compulsions, that's, that's the shift of this game. 
here. I love know? that you said that. I'm a little, I'm a little Star Wars fan. <laughs> yeah. I was yeah. like, yes, there's some life force and you yeah. can wow, break Yeah, down. exactly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Jedi. Um, but but no, I mean, it, it's because it, it, it like my hope is, is at this point in this series, if you've been with us the whole time, most most people start with this idea of I have this content problem you know, whatever it is, right? Like okay. sexuality, harm, you know, um, mm-hmm. racism, you know, X, Y, Z, I have these thoughts and I don't want them. Yeah. And everything that the, the paradox is, is everything you've been doing to try to get rid of the thoughts is actually the thing that's kept you stuck. That's right. That's and, right. And, and so when we switch to the idea of no, wait, hold on, you actually have a behavior problem. Yeah. And you're like, well, what, you know, and, and then, but by removing your behaviors, what happens is, is you got to, you get to now start trying to remove something that you're in control of, because when you try to remove your thoughts, like we know that doesn't work, try not yeah. to think of a white bear for five seconds. Okay. Yeah. Guess what? There it is. Right. <laughs> you know, I mean, I mean, but that's, that's the point, right. Mm-hmm. Is that once we shift to the thing that we're in control of, well, mm-hmm. now, now we have power in the game. Exactly. And that's exactly what ERP helps us do. And then we have ACT, right? We have acceptance right. commitment therapy. And, and actually, I wanted to, you know, also ask you kind of if we can talk a little bit about that um, and kind of how, how does that yeah. work and kind of well, what do you do? So, so, so my philosophy with ACT, and again, you know, it, there, there's people that will disagree and agree and whatever, that's fine. How, how I've found to, to have it be the most um, effective is I think ACT serves a great purpose as a transitional tool from ERP to everyday life, right? Because there's this point of ERP where we do ERP and we actually calm the mind and the body down, Mm -hmm. right? Where eventually we're reappraising these thoughts and seeing them as just thoughts, right? Mm -hmm. Our body's not actually, once we do ERP to the point where our body calms down and that habituation process and neuroplasticity has taken place, which happens through ERP, then there's this idea of, okay, well, now what? Because like now, oftentimes, if you've been worrying about something for seven years, there, there's this like rebuilding of life that we have to engage in, mm-hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. I mean, I've, I've worked with several people that have been housebound. I mean, no job, yeah. no friends, yeah. no anything. And it's like, okay, yeah. now we got to start building, right? Yeah. And there, there's going to be a component of, well, there's going to be flare-ups, right? On, yeah. on this journey, there's, there isn't this day where I had OCD and now I don't have OCD anymore. Right. Right. What, what's going to happen is that there's going to be this, like you get out of the lens and you're feeling like yourself again, mm-hmm. but the OCD is going to be there trying to rope you back in from time to time. And so ACT really allows us to, through the like six pillars of acceptance, right? Present moment awareness, mindfulness, mm-hmm. um, value-based decisions, committed action, cognitive diffusion, and uh, self as context. Once we understand that we're the observer of the thoughts, Once we understand that our goal really is to accept the present moment as it is. So if I have a thought that I don't like, the more I can work with the idea that my brain can produce anything and I'm going to be willing and and open that door to say, you know what, brain, I give you permission to produce any thought you want. Uh I'm not going to have this box here where brain, you can only produce these thoughts and these thoughts are absolute no-go because if I have that box, what do you think OCD is going to latch onto, right? It's going to be like, oh, there's the ammunition, right? Oh, that's mm-hmm. why I got him. Yep. Got him. <laughs> and, uh, and, 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 and then really living by your values. So, so there's this kind of component of we stack act on top of the principles of ERP already. Mm-hmm. And we, and we use that as a good tool to stack on top of it, to start building and living the kind of life you really want to live. Because if there's a tragedy of OCD and, and, uh, you know, which again, I'm encompassing all OCD. We're talking about taboo thoughts on this series, but the real tragedy of OCD is the amount of time it takes from you that you will never yeah. get back. That's like if, right. if, if I look at my own experience, it's like, I lost years of my life that I will never get back. And, and, and I, you know, I have to sit with that and really be honest with that. And, and, and that's why the tools are really me deciding, Hey, do I want to give another minute of my life of, to OCD or do I want to live life on my terms? It's, it's never that I achieved full certainty about my fears. What it is, is, as I said, you know what, living this life that I have is more important to me than giving it away to OCD. And, and that's, that's the 100%. choice right there. Yeah. You know? And, and, and then, so, so act, 
and we can talk about that much more, obviously on the, um, yes. on the workshop, but, mm-hmm. but the, so ERP is really the cornerstone, right? You, yes. a, a lot of people want to just jump to act, right? Because yes. ERP is scary, right? Yep. And, and I think in, in my experience, I don't advise that. I don't think that's a good idea because I think that it has its place in the, t- in the skill set, but I think it supplements ERP perfectly in yes. the transitional time after you've done ERP, but you can't have your cake without going through the work, man. It's like, you, you got to do the ERP aspect. You can't keep doing compulsions and you act. That doesn't work. Exactly. That's what I tell people all the time. You keep, you, you, you keep, you're trying to get some magic bullet and solution, but, but you're trying to do it by bypassing something that you can't bypass. You, you can't, right. it's like, you can't just like open my brain and go, okay, wait, here's the OCD. I don't yeah. want it. Yeah. We don't, we don't, you know, we don't do that. It's, it's, like, it's kind of like, it's kind of like, you know, Hey, I want a really good marriage, Matt, but you know, this whole like talking out problems thing. I don't want to do that. Uh, yeah. you know? <laughs> Can we just have the love making and stuff? You know what I mean? It's like, like you know, oh, no. Yeah, uh-huh. no, actually you need it. You don't got to do it all here. Yeah, um, yeah, exactly. and, and so, yeah, it's the whole package. And, and so, um, that's a funny analogy, but that's a good one. It makes but, the point. Like, yeah, yeah I mean, I mean, in a relationship, you got to communicate like, yeah, like, you can't like bypass that. Yeah. And, and with, ERP, the the value you get from ERP, as tough as it might be at times, the value you get is who you become through it. Oh yeah. You know, like because, because you build confidence to face fear and you get to take that confidence into every fear that comes your way in the future. It's like, I, I would never trade going through ERP. You know what I mean? Like I, I, for anything, because I think it was one of the most valuable things I ever did. Oh, a hundred percent. And to be honest, knowing that I have those tools and, and it's, and I think for anybody listening, you know, I want you to really grasp that when you really master these tools and, and any times, you know, you, your brain gets a little stuck. The beautiful thing is that, um, you know, exactly what to do and when to do it. Right. And, yeah. and, and so it's like knowing, knowing all the tools you have at your disposal and then the timing of what to do when, right. So yeah. ERP act, and in that, we also talked about mindfulness and, and, right. and living in a present way and living in a way where, you, and, and one thing I, you know, I talk about mindfulness is too, is, is not just waiting and doing it only when you're stressed, because you can start to do mindfulness as a compulsion, right? Right, 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 right. Um, but really using that as this additional training that you're doing throughout the whole treatment mm-hmm. as, as part of um, increasing that self-awareness muscle and really making sure that you're actively allowing yourself to develop it. And, and it literally when you practice it like that, and, and that can be, you know, a five minute guided meditation, it could be a 10 minute one, a 15 minute one, it can be a walk, where you're just focusing on everything you're seeing around you or what you're hearing, you can use your senses, but where you're really proactively training yourself in that way. Right. And there's so much uh, research and studies that have shown um, how effective it is in terms of helping your brain and your being learn how to literally just stop and slow down and be with whatever is in the moment, whatever right. is. And, and realizing that with ACT, that's the only thing you're really accepting is what is right now. Mm-hmm. It's not, you're not accepting a terrible scenario in the future. What you're accepting is what is happening right now, right? Exactly. And, and the more, like you said, it's a muscle. The more you practice it, the better you get at it. And, and with mindfulness, the first thing you should really start doing is just noticing how unmindful you really are. Yeah. Like when you drive a car and you get to your destination, you're like, I was just thinking the whole time. Oh God, I hope I didn't run any red lights. You know what I mean? Because, because you're so in your head all the time. And so the practice of being in lost in thought is very common. So mindfulness is really working against that whole practice. Mm-hmm. And so, and, and really, so when we're talking about the, the tools here, they all work together, right? There's yeah. not, there's not this, like, I only want to pick this tool. It's like, it all comes together. You know, exactly. and, and, and that's why, so, and, and what happens eventually though, with these tools is that if you actually don't respond to the thoughts as if they are threats, your brain starts recategorizing them as nothing and your brain doesn't want to waste energy. So it stops producing them because you're teaching your brain. They're not important. Exactly. You know? Right. That's and, and, it. and so it's a, it's a, you get, you get the result in a very backwards way. Right. Yeah. That's by how being, we tell people it's going to be yeah. super counterintuitive. <laughs> yeah. It, it's a very counterintuitive process. Absolutely. And, and that's the thing about this thing. And so, you know, what we want to extend to you guys right now is an invitation to go deeper with us on this. Right. You know, because we really hope that you found this series valuable. And if this is something you struggle with, the thing is, is it won't go away on its own. I mean, my, my bet is you guys know that by now. Right. You guys have probably tried everything and you can and, and you're here. And, and what we are doing is we're doing a live workshop 
Yes. To go deeper into all of these, talk about real case studies, real exposure processes, and also giving you that Q and a live time to get guidance from us, right. You know, in a, in a coaching mo- mindset of like, Hey, what should I do specifically for this? Okay, cool. Yeah. And, and, and we're able to all learn from each other. And Makes we're sense. holding that on the 27th of October. Um, yeah. And the, the great news is, is that we've made it super cheap and, and we're, we're really doing it to try to get as many people as possible. But again, because it is going to be live on zoom, there is a limited seats that are going to be available. So make sure to go register and to claim your seat because we don't want you to miss out on this. Right. And, and if this is something you struggle with, you deserve to take your life back from this and you don't have to stay stuck. And, you know, cause like in Christine, and I can both attest to how dark things can get, oh. but we, but we also can attest to what it's like on the other side of that fence. Yes. And, absolutely. and that's what makes us in this workshop different is like, we're not talking from theory. We're not talking from something we read in a book. We're talking from real life experience and, and we want to give that to you. So you have that. So, um, so all you need to do is down in the notes, there's a link where you can get registered. Um, if you go to restored minds backslash workshop, um, that will be where you can register as well. And again, we are going to have that cutoff time. So you'll see on the date, the last time to register. And if you don't, then you're going to miss out. So please make sure you do that. And uh, just first and foremost, just thank you so much, Christina, for being with me on this. I've really enjoyed this series with you. Thank you, Matt. Um, and I look forward to our workshop on the 27th. Absolutely. Me too. All, All right. right. We'll see you there. Bye. All right. Bye. Guys.